Hello everybody, it's Peter, KJ5AJB here with Ham Radio Crib Notes, and uh, we're going to bring you another episode today, and today we're going to cover uh, propagation, and uh, in particular, the uh, use of the uh, Vocat panel on uh, your uh, ham clock display. So we'll get into that in a bit here. Uh, also, let's see, the channel's doing pretty good. We haven't increased that much since the last time. We're up to 417 subscribers, as you can see by my little tote board behind me there. And uh, we're doing good. And I just appreciate everybody uh, subscribing and watching, and I hope you enjoy the content we have. Uh, and news-wise, uh, I think this weekend is the Huntsville Ham Fest, so quite a few folks are up there hanging out. And uh, they should be probably having a pretty good time. Hopefully there's some good deals up there for y'all, and y'all enjoy that. Uh, otherwise, I think over the weekend of like this, I think it's the 16th or 17th is the uh, the Lighthouse uh, event. They'll be on the air. Uh, I had a total, I think I had a total of uh, how many there were supposed to be. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But so anyways... Hope y'all are doing well. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And like it. Go ahead and mash that like button. All right. Let's get going here. All right, we're back. So anyways, this summer's been kind of a, a pain because of uh, the propagation. We've got uh, we're at the peak of the solar uh, cycle, it, and uh, I know 40 meters has been quite bad at trying to hit different places, especially close in. It's somewhat decent on the long band, but... Uh, Anyways, it's been kind of a pain. So there's uh, different tools out there we can use to kind of get an idea of what's going on out there. Uh, they're not always 100% accurate, but they give you a close idea of what's going on. So so on uh, the ham clock, you know, we have the vocap panel on there that gives us information on the... Uh, what frequencies is probably fairly decent or bad or or whatever. But uh, anyways, uh, that information is actually derived from the vocap site itself. And uh, the uh, I actually looked up the, uh, the vocap acronym actually stands for Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. And you can find that at vocap.com. And uh, I'm going to do like a little guide here of configuring the bow cap on your ham clock for your personalized propagation predictions. Uh, there's a couple little things you can set on there for your setup. Uh, if you want really detailed information, I suggest you go to the bow cap site itself. But for a quick look stuff for us, when, uh, the little panel seems to do uh, pretty good. Uh, I'll do like a quick little recap on some of the basic ham clock functions we have um it's actually a pretty good little thing and most people enjoy having them in their ham shack so from there let's see i'm gonna move over to main screen here so that should probably put me down in the bottom right hand corner and uh so we'll start off with uh, some of these review things here. So, you know, the padlock here, you got the padlock here. That's for you can lock the screen, do demo mode configurations, post diagnostics and all that good stuff. Uh, reboot your computer and shut down your computer, okay? And you got a bunch of other things in there. You've got the little uh, clock symbol here. You can toggle it. And it'll give you a uh, set up an alarm or a countdown timer, and you can just run a big clock on the screen itself. A lot of people use that for contesting and stuff. 
Uh, your UTC time is displayed here. A lot of people try to adjust that to their local time. And uh, get over to my notes here. Uh, a lot of your other various panels, you can click in up here in the corner and you can set all the different things in there. Uh, solar stuff, auroras, uh, DX clusters, disturbance, and all that stuff. And uh, But we're not too interested in that today. Today we're interested in the, this panel right here, the vocap panel itself. So one of the uh, first things is uh, the vocap works based upon the DE and DX positions on your map here. So my DE is actually set here, hopefully fairly close to Mississippi. And the DX is set all the way over here in the UK right now. Uh, some of these other things, uh, a lot of people will ask what this little symbol down here in the right-hand corner is that I got the pointer on right now. That is actually a point if you drilled a hole from where this is straight through the earth, that's where you'd come out at. It's a, if you ever wondered what that was. I'm not sure why we have it, but it's there, just in case you're interested. So anyways, uh, the other thing was uh, I kind of wanted to look up the history of the terms DE and DX. So I came across some information on that. So they actually originate from the telegraphy era when they used telegraph, and we still use it today in amateur radio. And DE and DX are actually abbreviations for specific meanings. Meanings are like a shorthand. So DE is the Morse code abbreviation used to signify from or this is. Okay, and it originated back when they were using the telegraph, but we carried it forward into the Morse we use on, on ham radio. Uh, so it's indicated, it's used to indicate Morse code communication to indicate the station is transmitting. For example, it would be CQ, 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 DE, K1, ABC. Means calling anyone, calling anyone, calling anyone from K1, ABC. And then on DX, that's your where you're trying to transmit to, which is actually a shorthand for distance or distant. In the ham radio context, DX refers to the pursuit of making a contact with stations locating at a significant distance, often in other countries or even other continents. The activity of trying to make these distant contacts is known as DXing that we use today. In essence, D is about identification and Morse code transmission, while DX relates to the exciting challenge of long-distance communication within the ham radio hobby. So hopefully that's a good little tidbit of information for you. So now we'll move back over to our vocap panel here on ham clock. And uh, one of the first things you notice is the different colors that are on there. Uh, they're not the same as on the vocap site, but they'll kind of make sense once you know what they're for. So the black colors basically mean less than 10% of reliability. The red is less than 33%, yellow is less than 66%, and green is above that. So comparing to our to this vocap here, you can see green across a little bit of the bands in there. And uh, just depends how you have it set up because it will change if you change your DX or how you're operating your radio too. So... And then, like I said uh, before, also, you, if you wanted more de detail, you could go to vocap.com and put your information in there. And it's a pretty complicated site. There's, uh, I think there's a YouTube video out there for how to use it. I'll try and find that and post it in the as a link down below. Okay, on your vocap panel itself. You can change uh, the time scale from DE to UTC. So if you see where my pointer is there, if I click on that, you notice it changes to DE or UTC. 
uh, it's useful to have uh, if you have trouble mentally getting your head around the D, yeah, the UTC conversion time conversions. Um, then oh, here, just below that, you can set your uh, radio power. I think the default is generally 100 watts on on uh, ham clock, uh, and that's what my radio operates at. Others that have uh, amplifiers and stuff, you can do 500 or 1,000. Okay, then you can set your uh, mode of operation also. So if you click here, you see it currently defaults to CW. So if I take and I change that to single sideband, you're going to see it update. So that, yeah, that looks pretty bad, huh? <laughs> And then uh, here you can also set your uh, your uh, degrees, one degree, three degrees, or nine degrees. So the default is three, and I think that's what it lives on the vocab site too. So let's try one of these. Uh, let's see what it lives on FT8. And okay. We'll go back to uh, CW here for now, and then okay. And then uh, this is the L, you have LP, after that you have LP and SP, short path, long path. Long path is looks kind of pretty bad. Short path looks a little better. And this will coincide with, or S is a 145. So, uh, and if you take and move your, your uh, DX marker. So if I click here and click set DX, click OK, that should move there. And then you notice this up here changed. So if you look at your various bands here, you can see that it's pretty good down to South America, a lot better than it was over here into, the, uh, into Europe. Set DX over there. Okay. So then say you were trying to do it in the States uh, from your location, you could click over here. Set your DX in the US. Okay. And there you go. Got a lot of green between... 20 and 30, 40 is kind of sketchy if, if we change that over to our time. So my time locally between t noon and uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, it's going to be pretty bad on 40 and 80. 30 looks to be all right most of the day and 20s good up till uh, 20 tonight. Go back to UTC. So you can coordinate those times there with whatever, whichever clock you want to use. So, and then again, like I went over, this is your D marker. This is your DX marker. I'm going to move him back over here to your DX. Okay. Now the map was changing at the same time. That's why it took a while. All right, and you know all the map stuff pretty much. If you go over here and you click on this, you can select all the different map setups you want. I mainly have uh, countries and uh, yeah, your maximum usable frequency to come up on mine. I don't bother with the the you know, weather or the clouds or any of those. Yeah, you can select your different grids down here. And then your uh, map projection itself. Mine, and I have set to Mercator. So you can change all of that stuff there. So I'm just going to click cancel on that. 
gehen so. All right. And that's all the basics I have on that. So hopefully this information is uh, good and valuable to you. And uh, you can use it in your daily activities for your, for your operations. Uh, there's going to be, like I said, on between on the weekend of the 16th and the 17th. Let me check the calendar here real quick to make sure that's the right weekend. Yeah, it's actually this weekend. They're supposed to be having the lighthouse events. So you can get on the air and get some of them added to your logbook for the weekend here. So I hope you all enjoyed this information, and uh, we'll go through the uh, – don't forget to subscribe, share it with your buddies, and mash that like button. And we just thank you all again for watching. Uh, thanks for all the support. We appreciate that. And uh, this is KJ5AJB and uh, 73s. Y'all have a good one.